Hey everybody, how you doing? Mark here. Finally, it's happening. I am out on my 2023 icebreaker ride. Ah, oh, this feels so good. It is kind of cool today. We're uh, right around, I think, 40 degrees, a little bit under actually right now. But hopefully by the time I get home, it'll be maybe 42 or something like that. But uh, as you can see, it's fairly cloudy, not too sunny today. And I tell you, it has been a chore trying to figure out when I can get out on this ride. I thought I had it like two weeks ago. And ends up being that the uh, rainstorm that I was waiting for to come in and wash all the salt off the road turned out to be an ice storm so we ended up with like an inch of ice over everything which means the uh, state county and local uh, road people had to come out and lay down more salt so <laughs> so here i am hoping that the rainstorm was going to wash away all the salt off the road and I could get out and ride. And instead it produced more salt onto the road and I had to wait for another rainstorm. But luckily that rainstorm has come and it did a pretty good job on washing the salt off the road. And in fact, even, what was it, uh, not last night, but the night before, we had a little bit of rain. And, uh, and it even uh, helped a little bit more on getting some more salt washed off the road. So, here I am on Angel with not having to worry about the salt getting on her metal components and rusting stuff out. That's what I wait for, people. It's not that I can't ride in cold or anything like that. I just don't want the salt on the bike. You guys understand. You guys take care of your bikes. You know what I'm saying. I like that house. As you can see, I got my new helmet on. Um, it's a little loud around the ears. But other than that, it's not too bad. I am getting some updraft air uh, coming up into the face shield, so I don't know how much of that uh, is going to be wind noise on the microphone. Shouldn't be much with the uh, dead cat on the microphone. A lot of the noise you're going to hear is actually the wind hitting the front visor, you know, just hitting me right here, and you're hearing that wind. It's not necessarily the wind hitting the microphone. So the little bit of wind noise that I'm going to be getting, there's really nothing I can do about it until maybe I can get a higher uh, windshield or something like that, which I have no plans on doing. <laughs> but I'm hoping that the uh, camera angle on the side of my helmet is good. I'm hoping that it's not facing too far up or too far down or too far in or too far out. And I'm also hoping that the uh, tilt is right, you know, I'm hoping that it's not towed in or out. So yeah, there's a lot of variables there that I might have to adjust when I uh, go back and watch this footage. But we'll see. As you can see here, I'm wearing my dicky, And it is the long neck. And I do need it today because it is kind of cold. Like I said, it's like 40 degrees. So it's a cold little ride. If I didn't have this up over my chin, my chin would be getting very cold right now. But I made a modification to the sticky. Um, if you remember and watch that uh, episode where I got the Scampa Dicky, the long neck version that I ordered, the uh, bib, I think the uh, manufacturer calls it a shield, was only like that long. It wasn't very long at all, where my old one is like way down here by my belly. 
and I contacted, well I didn't contact, I wrote a review on, uh, I can't remember the website, I can't remember if it was actually their website or if I bought it through Amazon or something like that, I, I just don't remember. But uh, I left a message saying I was disappointed on the length of the bib or the shield in that it was so short, you know, my older one was so much longer and that I'm sure that the company uh, changed the length of the shield for, uh, you know, to re help reduce material costs and stuff like that. And lo and behold, the uh, um, company owner actually reached out to me saying that that wasn't the case why they stopped making the long shield at all. It was that people were complaining that the shield was too long. And I actually thought about it. It's like, well, you know, it comes down to about here on me and I'm six and a half feet tall. So yeah, if someone's only maybe five, six or five, eight or something like that, it would almost come, you know, down below their belly to their waistline. So I could actually see how that could be too long for somebody. But he, uh, he said, well, if you want, I'll make you the long neck with the long shield. And it's like, you know what, that's all right. I've already got it covered. I told him that I found a uh, seamstress up in Janesville and I asked them to switch the, uh, the two necks around. So I took them both dickies. I took them my old one with the uh, long shield and the short neck and the short shield with the long neck and told them to remove the necks and flip them so I have the long neck on the long shield and the short neck on the short shield. And they did it for 25 bucks. So all's good. You know, I got one, this one here, it's not staying up on my chin like I had hoped. I keep on having to adjust just a little bit. But all in all, it's not bad. It's not quite as uh, cumbersome as the short neck so I am still liking this my neck is not cold at all and I really don't feel any wind hitting me here through the shield this is protecting me very well I am loving this thing I really am um, for those of you for those of you that have been watching some of my other videos, you'll know that I've got that uh, eight day camping trip for this year. And I plan on going out for eight days, but I'm not gonna do it all in one place. I'm actually gonna move around. So most of the uh, websites that I use, like the uh, Ice Age Trail, the um, Rustic Roads maps, and even the uh, DNR uh, state park maps, it seems like they're always cutting the state into quadrants. So you have a Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, Southeast. And I actually plan on doing two nights in each of those quadrants. So we'll be at four different parks. We're gonna go and see some of those roadside attractions that I like. I find them on Road America or RoadsideAmerica.com. I think I messed that up in my camping video from last year that I put down RoadsideAmerica.com. That wasn't right. And now that it's in the video and uploaded, I can't change it. So yeah, it's RoadsideAmerica.com. So we'll see some of those little fun things. But then uh, I'm also going to do at least one rustic road while I am 
out and about. So I'll have at least four rustic roads to show you guys during that camping. Oh, speaking of rustic roads, oh, look at that silo. That's cool. That's really neat. Speaking of rustic roads, my dad called me uh, the other day and said, hey, did you hear about the rustic roads program? And my first thought is no, you know, I'm, are, are they like canceling the program or something? That they're not doing it anymore or what? And uh, he's like, oh, they, they started a, another new rustic road. It's like, really? That made the news? Well, it made the news because it's just outside of Madison. <laughs> That's why it made the news. So yeah, since the uh, new road is uh, out by Mount Horeb, and that's just west of Madison. So because it's so close, it made the news. But now the program has 124 roads. Now you remember just last year, I did road number 122, which at the time was the newest road. But before I even had that road published in, uh, in live on YouTube, they had already issued road number 123. And that's up by uh, Lake Winnebago, up by... Uh, was it Appleton and Green Bay area up there somewhere? So yeah, now they've got a road 124. It's like, man, how am I going to get all these done? <laughs> I want to do them all. I really do. I want to do all of them. And they keep on adding more. <laughs> uh, not that I mind, man. I will do them. And in fact, I think we ought to go out and do that brand new rustic road. It's not too far away. I can get there in maybe an hour 15, hour and a half. And yeah, we'll do it, man. We're gonna ride that new road. So the other thing that I got going on, if you saw my last hiking video that just went up last week, you might have seen me talking kind of bad about things that I have been seeing on YouTube and how YouTube is starting to take advantage of their creators. At least I feel they're taking advantage of creators. In that they want to start charging creators to use their music platform and stuff like that. So you'd have to pay like $15 a month or a certain amount per song or you might even have to share monetization with the creator, which I don't mind sharing. I mean, hell, that's a lot better than the old system where if someone finds copyrighted song on your channel, they completely give all the monetization to that song uh, composer or the owner of that music. Which I thought was stupid because, you know, I put up a 40 minute video and three minutes into that video, there is a, a song and it's played once. So out of a three and a half minute long song, they own all the rights to my video and gets paid everything. I thought that was stupid. So I started using all the uh, all the YouTube stuff that was free. They didn't require anything. They don't require putting up a little uh, blurb, you know, a little splash of the song title and the owner of it or the composer of it or whatever and give credit, which I don't mind. I, you know, if somebody wants me to do that and give them credit for their music, that's fine. I don't care. You know, they should be getting credit for that. But 
they're really pushing for creators to pay money to them for rights to music. And I can't do that. I can't afford $15 a month. You know, for the past three months, I have not even generated a hundred dollars. Seriously. I need to earn a hundred dollars before I get paid and I have not been paid for three months. So how am I supposed to also now pay them fifteen dollars a month just to use some music? And don't get me wrong, not all the music is that way. They are keeping some of the music free, which is great. Thank you. But I've decided I'm just not going to use music anymore and that was one of the primary reasons why I don't have music playing in the background in my videos anymore because I don't want YouTube or the music creators to all of a sudden go you owe us money for using our music and they can legally do that it's theirs they have the right to all of a sudden change everything and say nope you gotta have this that and the other thing to you know to use our music and there's nothing I can do about it. The other thing I've been seeing now too, and this happened just shortly after I hit the 2,000 subscriber mark late last year, and that was YouTube is letting creators um, pay YouTube money to air their content as an advertisement. And they say that doing that gets the gets your channel out there and gets people to notice you and watch your video. And you know, you could get a million views off of that video because you used it as an ad. Well that's great that you're getting the views, but they're running your video as an ad so you're not able to generate any ad revenue off of that because there is no advertisement running during your ad is that you know what I'm saying that just doesn't make sense to me and the odd thing is is people are doing it you know I'm constantly getting little advertisements popping up on my uh, on my YouTube homepage and there's just like people out talking about their their life of something going on you know those little uh, life blog vlog type things and, or you know someone at a racetrack or you know someone building something uh, connecting um, solar panels together and it's not a video from a company. It is literally someone's homebrew channel. I think it's kind of sad, really, that people are doing it. So yeah, I, I've been really trying to figure out what's going on with YouTube. You know, how long is it going to be now before they start wanting to charge me a couple of dollars to even upload a video? That's really the thoughts that are starting to go through my head. And I guarantee you that if I'm having that thought, someone over at Google and YouTube have already thought about it. And they're trying to figure out how to do it. So... Here I've been running my channel now for 11 years and I'm starting to get thoughts on, you know, am I going to have to shut this down before they start charging me for uploading videos or using, you know, X amount of storage space on their, on their drive systems and stuff like that. I just don't know guys. I have uh, I've been getting a few questions from people, a few uh, questions from friends. 
And some people ask me why I have not made a winterizing your bike video. And truthfully, it's because I really don't do anything to winterize my bike. <laughs> I do basically two things to winterize my bike. I take it out and get it washed. You know, a manual service car wash. And use their little brush systems and high pressure hoses and whatnot. And then uh, the second thing I do, I fill it up with gas. The little uh, fill tube that's in your tank what you need to do is you need to actually fill it up to that tube and the reason for that is because um, gasoline is actually hydroscopic it actually absorbs water and moisture and I know what some people will say is that oh you know you got uh, yeah it, you know, water can't get in there unless you leave the gas cap open or something. No. Okay, water molecules are very small. And they will find their way into your gas tank. You know, just the moisture in the air. It doesn't have to rain. It doesn't have to be dripping on it or anything like that. That gasoline will pull that moisture in out of the air. But the thing is, if you decrease that surface area of the gasoline then it won't be able to absorb as much okay now that's the main word as much it will still absorb some because you do have gas that is uh, connected and uh, open to the air But it's better to have, you know, the, a round little area this big open to the air instead of a area that big open to the air. You know, if you have less surface area for that gasoline to pull in that moisture, it's much better. So the only thing I ever do, wash it get all the bugs, dirt, grime, the bird poop, get all that off of it so it doesn't ruin your paint. And then fill up the gas tank. That is my winterizing. Oh, Mark, don't you put it on a trickle charger or something like that for battery tending? No, actually I don't. I have no power running to my garage. I don't have that ability to plug in a trickle charger. And people are like, oh man, with those extreme colds, you know, we had temperatures down into the negative 40s. Negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And no, I don't have a trickle charger. And Angel started right up. I went out to the garage today. This is literally the first ride of the year for me. I put the key in, started right up, no hesitation. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's not like it's a, oh, well, you know, you just got lucky. And no, no. Uh, Angel is, what, 16 years old now. I've only ever had three batteries in this bike. And one of them burned up quickly because I wired in something wrong. And it kept deleting the, uh, depleting the battery all the way to empty. So after, you know, if I don't ride it for like two weeks, I would go out and the battery was dead. That is because something I had wired in, I think it was actually like a USB uh, plug. It wasn't meant to be wired in through a direct battery line, and that's the way I did it. It drew out a current continuously, even if the bike was turned off. I didn't realize that. So after six, seven months 
I'm constantly depleting the battery, charging it back up, depleting the battery, charging it back up. It finally just lost strength and I had to replace that battery. But if you take that one out, then I've only had two batteries for this bike in, in 16 years. So yeah, to me that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. You know, a lot of people freak out that, you know, you need to have a tender on it. You know, your battery is going to explode and stuff. No, no, it won't. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I, I see people that are on YouTube and they're constantly putting their batteries on trickle chargers. But then they're also always complaining that their batteries are always dead. It's like, how can that be? You know, they keep on coming on and saying, well, I have to put this on there because, you know, if I don't, my battery dies. There's something wrong with your electrical system if that's the case. You shouldn't be having to deal with putting a bike away and coming back in a couple weeks to a dead battery. You got something wired up wrong. I tell you, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Now, I do have a uh, my blue zip-up hoodie underneath this jacket because the jacket itself actually does not have an insulational layer. It has a liner. You know, it's got a little satiny liner to the jacket, but it's not an insulated liner. So I do have my blue zip-up hoodie underneath the jacket. And then I've got my, my dickie on. And then for my legs, I've got blue jeans and my chaps. And my legs are starting to get a little cold, you know, but I've already been riding around for over half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that. Hey everybody, uh, sorry about this, but uh, it was actually so cold outside that I think my camera just decided to stop working. So yeah, I was uh, uploading the video footage onto my computer and I noticed that uh, it wasn't as long as it should have been and yeah I think it was just too cold and that camera just did not want to keep going. Uh, I haven't looked at the 360 stuff yet so I don't know if that uh, recorded the whole thing. I think it did because I got the little um, that little button screen that's on that camera that I can see and I don't remember it ever turning off except for after the first file was full because it re only records for like 30 minutes and then it kind of shuts down for like 30 seconds as it generates a new folder and then it turns back on and keeps going. So I think the 360 did fine, but my helmet cam actually uh, stopped because it was getting too cold. But um, the only other thing that I was talking about that wasn't recorded was that um, I'm thinking about doing a uh, another ride video every week. I have been kind of toying with the idea of just doing a no talking ride video. Just set the camera up on my helmet, find a nice little country road, and just ride. All right. Um, a lot of the roads around here aren't all that curvy, but they could be hilly. Um, I could travel maybe half hour, hour out of my way to get some, to some nice uh, curvy hilly roads, but again, I just don't know. Um, but let me know if you guys are interested in that type of video. Are you interested in seeing just a ride? You know, uh, I won't talk anything about the road and anything like that. You know, I won't be sitting there going, ooh, look at that, type stuff. I'll just be on my bike riding. Uh, you'll probably get some wind noise, of course, through the microphone system, but for the most part, I'm thinking I'll just leave it the way it is and and see how it goes. So let me know. Write a comment down below. If you think that's a good idea, we can do those like every weekend. You know, I'll do it as a Saturday, Sunday, or even a Monday upload or something like that. So yeah, make a comment down below and let me know what you guys think of that idea of having just a no talk ride video every weekend. 
All right, well, this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. I do appreciate it very much. And just always believe in yourself, guys. Always believe you can go out and do your adventure, okay?